Every argument from contingency depends on the idea that all things, facts or propositions are in need of some kind of explanation. To say that something is true, but it's true for no reason whatsoever, i.e. a brute fact, is detrimental to any kind of metaphysical worldview. If the existence of some object is explained by reference to another object, then of course the question is how the existence of that object is to be explained. Terminating such a chain of explanations in an object that explains itself, i.e. carries within itself the reason for its own existence, is the theist's way out. Many non-theists slash naturalists, of course, don't like this solution, and they may not like brute facts, so they prepare another option. An infinite chain of explanations. Here you can have any object explained by another object without terminating such a chain by either an unexplained object or a self-explained object. I want to give an argument for the incoherence of such a proposal. I will try to show that such a proposal implies contradictory entailments for the modal status of the objects in question. So, an object is either impossible, existing in no possible world, contingent, existing in some but not all possible worlds, or necessary, existing in all possible worlds. But one cannot just look at all possible worlds and see what's in there. To know the modal status of an object, we have to have an idea of why it exists. If an object exists by the necessity of its own nature, it of course cannot fail to exist and therefore exists in all possible worlds, it's necessary. But an object can also exist in all possible worlds by virtue of another object. If a necessary object x1 necessarily brings about the existence of another object x2, then x2 exists in all possible worlds, but not because of its own nature, but because of x1. And yet x2 is necessary. Derivative necessity can only be the entailment of a self-explained object. Yet if x1 brings about x2, but not necessarily, then this means it does so in some possible worlds, but not in others, so it's not necessary since it doesn't exist in all possible worlds. But if an object y1 necessarily brings about the existence of y2, and y1 is only contingent, then y2 only exists in possible worlds where y1 exists, unless some other entity brings about y2. So if only y1 brings about y2, y2 is contingent. In order to determine the modal status of an object, we have to investigate the reason for its existence. If we know the reason for its existence, we can know its modal status. Now let's take a look at the proposal of an endless chain of non-self-explained objects and in turn explain each other. To make such an infinite chain of explanations work, we have to assume a pattern of necessary entailment. If the chain of inference is infinite, then if the entailment from one member to another could fail, then probabilistically speaking, the chain would have come to an end and would be finite. So the inference from one member to another is a necessary entailment. So we have a chain of necessary entailment between an infinite amount of objects. Fine. Let's pick out an object, say x0. x0 is necessarily entailed by x-1, which means x0 exists in all possible worlds where x-1 exists. Good. But that doesn't tell us the modal status of x0. We need to know the modal status of x-1. X-1 is necessarily entailed by X-2, which means X-1 exists in all possible worlds where X-2 exists. Good, but that doesn't tell us about the modal status of X-1. And so on, and so on, and so on. We can do this infinitely many times without ever determining the modal status of any member of the chain. But then it seems that none of the members of the chain have a defined modal status. But if none of the members of the chain have a defined modal status, then they are possibly necessary. And given the modal system S5, they are therefore necessary. But obviously such a chain doesn't involve any member that exists by the nature of its own necessity, and since all members derive their explanation only from other members of such chain, every member of such chain should be contingent. And that's a contradiction. The central point of the argument is the idea that a maximal account of explanation is proposed in the scenario. It attempts to give a chain of events in which all events are explained. But if it does not even suffice to determine the modal status of the member of said chain, it's a failure. A complete explanation, of course, has to determine the modal status of the objects in question. But none of the members has a defined modal status since every member necessarily derives its modal status from the preceding members, and none of them have one either. It's somewhat analogous to an argument of the form 1. If a minus 1, then a0. 2. If a minus 2, then a1. 3. If a minus 3, then a minus 2. 4. If a minus 4, then a minus 3. And so on and so on. 
If all you have is inferences without any premise reporting an actual state of affairs, you can have a big inference as the conclusion but never an obtaining state of affairs. But someone might say, let's suppose all members are contingent since that is normally the hypothesis, then we have no problem. All members are just contingent but they entail each other. But that won't work. The claim is that the scenario in question is a full explanation that leaves nothing out. The fact that the modal status of the members of the chain cannot be determined means, as I showed, they are not in fact contingent, they cannot be, because they are necessary. Fine, someone might say, then they are necessary, but I can give an argument for why such necessity does not solve the problem. Let's look at the whole chain. We can call it Y. If Y consists of only necessary elements, then it itself is necessary. But does it explain its own existence? Is the nature of Y the explanation for its own existence? Of course not. None of its parts explain their own existence, and so Y does not explain its own existence either. Y's necessity would be brute necessity, completely unexplained. A brute fact. But we wanted to avoid brute facts, otherwise why even contemplate such an infinite chain in the first place? 